Um, my colleague and I, Faris, want to kind of give you a, a better sense of who we are and what we invest in and what we think is interesting in MENA. So um, hopefully um, we'll kind of get you a bit excited with the opportunities out there. So this working? The ah, can't get the slides on. I'll start by introducing uh, while they get the slides up. So my name is Faris Randur. Uh, I'm investment manager. I was investment manager at Mina Venture Investments. Now I'm a, a partner at Wanda Capital. And Khalid here is the managing partner at Wanda Capital. Um, we'll talk a little bit more once we have the slides up, but uh, we are the largest Mina fund, uh, tech uh, venture fund at $75 million, mostly growth stage. So three to $5 million. But um, oh, there we, go. Yeah. we have a carve out um, there we go, for seed stage investments as well. So that's something we feel like we need to continue doing. Yeah, cool. So a bit about who we are. So as far as we're saying, we're a $75 million fund. Uh, we're mostly focused on MENA broadly, but we, um, we do have a number of areas we, we're specifically interested in. Um, we did our first closing in, in February this year. And we've, we've averaged about a deal a month. So we've done eight transactions in that period. Um, we're closing another two as we speak. Um, so by the end of the year, we'll have about 10. Um, what we're interested in broadly is really kind of that area that straddles Series A to Series B um, with a small allocation for uh, seed. Um, so we think there's still a lot of uh, a bit of an equity gap, despite a lot more capital coming into the market, around that one to five million, five to ten million dollar ticket size. Um, so we're really focused in companies within those stages. So a bit of the companies we've done to date: Kareem, Little Bits, Arabia Weather, Jamalon, Luxury Closet, compared for me, Shopco, and News Group. Uh, I think from all of those, you'll see an emerging trend, which is we're very interested in marketplaces. We're very interested in. Uh, if effectively sharing economy type business models, uh, which we think are very empowering in the region. Um, and we're interested in fintech, but we've not done a fintech transaction yet. And we'll get into a bit more of the detail of where the opportunities are. Okay, so this is the team. Um, what's interesting about how we're set up is uh, our geographic diversity. So we, we firmly believe that opportunities exist in MENA across the region as a whole and not in any one single territory. Um, uh, and as such, we're spread across the region. So we have presence in Dubai, Jordan, Lebanon, um, uh, and we are setting up now a presence in Cairo. Um, we also have a number of partnerships where we have access to markets in Saudi Arabia, uh, Abu Dhabi, uh, as well as Kuwait. Uh, we're founded by Fadi Ghandouri, former chairman, uh, former CEO and the founder of uh, Aramex. And prior to this fund, uh, has a seed vehicle called MENA Venture Investments. I think Faz can talk a bit about, and we have some of that portfolio up there as well. Yeah, that was a seed um, fund that was that started deploying capital back in 2009. So the average ticket size was about $250,000, and we had about 70 portfolio companies that we wrote um, 80 checks to, and you know some great exits there, including Yemek Sepeti in Turkey. Um, we had Souq as a portfolio company, we still, we're still in Souq. Uh, the Entertainer is a great company as well. Um, and that kind of seeded the transition from um, a, a less formal sort of uh, seed stage fund to where we are today at Wanda Capital. Um, so a lot of the investments that uh, have been made out of MENA Venture Investments are uh, investments that one the capital is following up following in on now um, that are at the growth stage and are kind of ripe for that bigger check to grow yeah the best thing about investing at the early stage in mina is that you're able to help really develop some of these entrepreneurs a lot of them don't come investment ready but when you come in at the seed level you really help build those companies uh, to the point where they can take a series a investment uh, and i think that's becoming a core focus of our investment strategy and a lot of the pipeline we're seeing really works through that funnel. Um, so yeah, um, and to, just to borrow a bit from Dave, I think uh, the global trend we're seeing is also happening here. So um, effectively, um, a lot of the legacy infrastructure of big corporations, big banks, uh, 
big logistics companies, all of that is being disrupted by the cost effectiveness of building software. Um, and we strongly believe that a lot of that is going to be more acutely felt in the region. Um, there's a lot of monopolistic legacy infrastructure that is um, that's abundant here that we think investing in early stage companies is going to help disrupt in a very uh, powerful way. Um, and it's getting a lot more cost effective to do that. Um, to give a small example, um, it's also becoming much easier to set up businesses. Um, Five years ago in Dubai, for example, it would take you uh, between twenty and thirty thousand dollars to set up a company and start trading. Now you can and take you a month to, to get that going. Now you can do that in as much as five days with a couple of thousand dollars. So we're seeing a lot of movement around this and a lot of movement around the ease of doing business with lean small companies. I think also to add to that, um, what this also means is simpler, faster, cheaper, and smarter is, is also a good thing, not in, in so far as it's, it's easier to build the company, but also um, it allows entrepreneurs to fail faster. Um, so it, it's, it's much easier to understand whether or not um, a startup is poised for success or failure. Um, so the, the rate of success slash failure of a startup is increasing exponentially. So it allows us to kind of more quickly be able to sift through whatever we have in our pipeline. Yeah. So that's on the, so what's happening in MENA, and I think one of the most interesting developments in MENA is back in 2008, 2009, when people were looking at um, consumer internet opportunities, the main pushback you'd get back, you'd get was, um, there simply isn't enough connectivity, people aren't online, it's gonna take 20 years to kind of get broad, the investment in broadband in, uh, and basically what's really transformed this is, is mobile, um, has totally leapfrogged this whole connectivity debate. Um, you could see the forecasts from, you know, from, from as early as seven, eight years ago saying that to get to the current level of penetration is going to take 15 to 20 years and, and that's been achieved in less than four to five and accelerating very quickly. Um, what's that enabled is this in a big way, this shift in our perception of digital regionally and the availability of deal flow. Um, there, are, there is now volume and scale around consumer internet propositions in the region. Um, it just kind of goes to show that consumers are um, more actively ready to adopt technology than legacy sort of businesses are um, ready to deploy the technologies that they're going to consume. So consumers will find uh, more and more creative ways to tailor you know, whatever solutions they can find through digital means to serve their demands. Yeah, I mean, just some interesting stats I think that have been kind of thrown around uh, the, to, the, the, today and yesterday, the night before. Um, the usage of, 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 uh, of uh, digital content in the region is some of the highest in the world, particularly in Saudi Arabia. So you have hours spent on social media, outstripping everywhere else, between Facebook to Google, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Instagram. It's more than two times the world average exactly. uh, for South. Uh, and that's just a bit more on that. So, so I think we're of, seeing a lot of this. Yeah. Video. So a lot of, you know, most of the time people online uh, via mobile are consuming video content, playing games. Um, and we just used the UAE and Saudi as examples here, but this is true across the region. Um, like going back to 2010, and you, uh, if you looked at the landscape at that time, it seemed like there were no other potential businesses to reach the kind of billion dollar valuation mark. Um, fast forward to today, I mean, you have a whole host of businesses that are on an accelerated path towards that magical billion dollar uh, uh, mark. And a whole host of businesses that are pushing the hundred million dollar mark as well. Um, this was inconceivable as early as five years ago. Uh, most of these businesses are businesses that have set up really after 2010, post Maktoub. Um, where we're interested to play in is really the next wave. We've caught up in some of the, the, the companies that we've seen, uh, but we're really looking at businesses that fill within, kind of are, are on an accelerated path towards, um, towards, that, uh, towards those valuation benchmarks. Um, really the areas we're interested in across these are kind of marketplaces, content, um, and fintech, and you can see a range of that across these companies. 
Um, so why now? What's interesting about now? Do you want to talk about this a bit? So I think um, Khaled and I were talking about this, and I think what was very a recurringly prominent theme was uh, what's happening now is that a lot of the a lot of the assets that are readily available um, but being inefficiently utilized are now um, uh, you know startups are now building tools and platforms around assets that you are more able that, that you're readily more able to utilize that include your time your money so let's say peer-to-peer -peer lending for money space storage so we're looking to invest in a, in a startup out of kuwait that's called boxit um, your car obviously you know the story of karim and uber your home so through um, something like airbnb so and and what's fueling these startups that are trying to bring efficiency to resources that are underutilized as data. So they're able to extract this data, digest it, um, and, and get into this loop where they're feeding it into the product and optimizing what, what they're delivering. Um, and I think, if you just go back to, and I think what, what that means is, um, and, why is it, and, and why now again for startups is that these legacy sort of businesses were not built um, with data in mind necessarily. So what that means is, they're, they're unable to make sense of the data they come across, um, and the basic premise is that data is what's going to drive the growth of these startups. Um. So uh, going into some of the verticals we're interested in, I think we talked about this a bit earlier and a number of other speakers have looked at it. I, um, going back to the theme that a lot of disruption is going to hit MENA in a much more um, pronounced way than in other markets in these verticals, lies the fact that the need here is greater. So if you look at just, just very simply the percentage of banked and underbanked in the region, it's, it's, it is by far the lowest in the world. And, there, and a lot of people are, should be bankable, but the nature of the banking industry here has, has inhibited that ability to access those markets. So we think this is an extremely interesting opportunity. Um, unfortunately, there isn't that much pipeline that comes out of the region for this. So we're looking at how can we explore this in a different way. But, um, but this is a, a really big area for us. Specifically within that, really we're looking at the credit gap. We think that there are a lot of credit-worthy individuals and businesses that should normally have access to credit, who simply don't, only because of the nature of the banking industry here. Um, this is also one of the largest credit gaps in the world. Uh, on a per capita basis, it, it is, it, it is high, it's the highest in the world after Sub-Saharan Africa. Yeah, and, that's, um, and, and these are, I mean, these numbers you see here, so it's literally a $320 billion opportunity, and that's just for formal SMEs. Um, and as we know, about 86% of MENA is unbanked. So if you do the math, the real opportunity is um, tapping into the, the informal SMEs as well, which could be up to you know a trillion dollars. That's a serious opportunity. Um, and the gap is the largest per, as, as a percent um, globally. Um, and again, to speak to this disruption point, I think the banks are just going to become irrelevant in this process. Um, we've not seen any of the regional banks really look at this in any serious way. And we feel we're just going to be taken by very quickly. Uh, then the, the, the other area we're very interested in is, is media and content. So um, uh, it, it, there's a similar content gap in the region. Um, I was talking to uh, my friend Walid Mansour this morning. Uh, in the Middle East, since the, the total number of all recorded music, for example, is no more than 100,000 songs. That's all the songs available for you to listen to in Arabic in the region. Uh, and, they, and, they are, and today, you have no more than 40 commercial artists in existence, effectively, uh, who are currently producing uh, records, of which only 10 are deemed Class A or Tier A, uh, in the sense they can turn over over 10 to $20 million um, in their kind of earning capability. So um, th that doesn't mean that we don't listen to music here, just like anywhere else in the world. We like music, we like to listen to content, we, we enjoy content, we enjoy entertainment. But there is a broken uh, value chain in, in the entertainment industry and the content creation industry, starting from the advertising dollars that fuel it through to the distribution. And we think there are a number of well-placed companies that can really fill parts of that gap. Um, do you want to add to that a bit? Yeah, and if you want to just go back to that slide, you could see that um, 
growth that is um, growth in, in mean ad, in the Amina advertising market is by and large coming from digital. Um, but if you if you go into the next slide, you'll see that um, money still hasn't caught up with the eyeballs. Um, advertising dollars are still spent on TV, which is growing. Um, magazines, which is a small percentage, and so is radio. But newspapers take up a big chunk of that. But that's not where eyeballs are. They're you know consuming digital content. Um. So, I mean, where does that place us? If we look at where we are today within those verticals, I mean, we look at e-commerce and where e-commerce is really leading the charge in terms of those billion dollar companies and those companies that are pushing $100 million. Commerce um, is really emerging as a, as a major driver of growth in the region. Um, and so if you look across these, across the kind of leading companies in the region, in digital generally, you'll find that marketplaces are at the head of the curve. Um, and, there, and we still think there's a huge opportunity uh, in e-commerce and marketplaces more broadly. We think there's a lot of trade that comes through uh, inter-regionally and inter-regionally. So there are big opportunity to move uh, product across borders in the, in the region. Um, uh, just a bit of kind of color on the types of, uh, on, on, on how um, seed and series A looks like, the areas in which we play. Um, this is not a very well-structured market. The private markets are quite fluid. So the definition of series A or seed really shifts and changes. Um, and, and, and as we understand it, really, this is what seed and series A look like. Seed looks between $300,000 to a $1 million, uh, with series A between a one to five million. And that's generally the areas in which we play and where we think the opportunities are coming from. Um, a bit on terms, I mean, they're pretty standard. I'm replicating a lot of what happens in, in, in elsewhere in the world. Um, Do you have three minutes left? Um, that's why we're kind of running through the yeah. slides. But uh, this just kind of goes over who's investing. Um, and the slide after it talks about the new entrants. So we have... Um, interest from global interest that's coming into the region now, both on an investment and a um, uh, acquisitions level. And I think, and I think Khalid could speak more to this. But generally, um, there aren't as many. And Zafar and I were talking about this yesterday. There aren't as there's not as much interest in acqui hires in the region, which I'm assuming makes up a big chunk of acquisitions in the states. Um, they acquire for scale here, so once we start seeing some major scale, that's when you start seeing more and more big names coming to the region. And you already have people like Rocket, uh, General Atlantic, and Abraj who are um, investing in tech heavily. Um, we get some international uh, interest in the region, everything from PE down to VC. You're beginning to see some strong international interest in investing in the region. Um, and I think that's one of the kind of the, the, the bigger emerging trends in the past year, two years. Um, just in terms of like our biggest takeaway since closing the fund, I think what generally what we've seen is that the, the, the market has matured a lot faster than we anticipated. It took us about a year and a half to close the fund. Um, and we had built a whole thesis and pipeline ar around a specific set of assumptions. We found that those assumptions changed very quickly. So we have a much healthier pipeline, much faster pipeline development than we thought. The sizes of transactions are increasing. Um, there's a lot more interest globally uh, in investing in digital, as well as a regional interest in investing in digital. Um, the, we are seeing consumer behavior shifting, so people are much more interested in investing in, in, in adopting a lot of digital products and digital services. Uh, E-commerce has really been one of the largest, e-commerce and marketplaces have been one of the largest success stories. Um, going from a, a negligible industry to a 15 to 20 billion dollar industry in three years. Um, entry to KSA remains a, a big issue for us and we think there could be some interesting opportunities in Iran once that opens up. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's that. That's, that's us and thank you very much for... Uh, for thank this. you. Thanks.